Hey everyone, today's video we're going to take a look at Super Mario Bros. Wonder on the Steam Deck, the Asus ROG Ally, the GPD WinMax 2, and the INEO Air 1S. Now, we'll be emulating it just through Yuzu because that's where I've gotten the best results. Uh, Ryu Jinx, you can get some okay performance out of it, but honestly the most consistent performance I've gotten has been with Yuzu. Um, I didn't need to use the Yuzu mod fix at all because that was for when the game got leaked and it was prior to, uh, and then Yuzu was basically blocking it to not be launching. Uh, so you don't need that mod anymore, Yuzu early access is all up to date now. I'm running Yuzu early access on all of them. Uh, so for the Steam Deck, we're running it at SteamOS 3.5.1, and we're running one gigabyte VRAM, and then everything else is just kind of left stock. We're not running cryo utilities or anything like that. The only thing I changed is SteamOS. Uh, I didn't undervolt or anything like that either. Uh, now running it on the INEO Air 1S, it has the 7840U, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 7500 megahertz. Now the 7840U and the Air 1S is running the official 7840U drivers from AMD. Uh, the GPD WinMax 2, we have 64 gigabytes of 6500 megahertz transfer RAM, but we're running the 7840U drivers that GPD put out uh, back when I believe Starfield was first released. Uh, but anyway, so we're running those drivers and you'll see that those drivers are actually better than the 7840U drivers on the INEO Air 1S, despite the faster RAM. And then on the ASUS ROG Ally, finally, we're running just the stock uh, basic whatever drivers that ASUS puts out. And we'll see that the performance on there and the Steam Deck is actually pretty darn solid. Uh, the GPD Win Max 2 with the custom drivers that GPD would put out. Uh, its performance can be pretty solid there as well. Uh, where performance is really kind of hobbled, it, spoiler alert, is on the 7840U running the official drivers. I don't know why, I'm not sure, everything else is set up the same, the only thing that's different is the drivers. Uh, so the again, the custom drivers for the GPD WinMax running the same chip is performing a lot better and a lot more consistently on the INEO Air 1S. But before we get into all that, I just want to give a quick huge shout out to Ugreen. Uh, they didn't uh, send me for anything for this video. The, I've already kind of completed all my terms with them for like deals or whatever. They don't ever give me any money, um, but they just send products. So I just wanted to highlight again their 300 watt GAN charger. Uh, this charger, it has four USB-C uh, ports and then one USB-A port. So it's a five port uh, charger total. You get 140 on the top port, 100 on the second port, and then I believe it goes 65 and 60 or 165. Uh, regardless, you can charge basically two laptops full speed at 100 watts and 140 watts. Um, and that's basically what I've just been using. I've been using all these to charge up all my devices. So the Steam Deck, the INEO, uh, the GPD, and the ASUS ROG Ally. It delivers full charge speeds and I can charge my phone at the same time while having another USB-C to spare, depending on how many devices I have going. So again, just a huge shout out to you, Green. I'll leave their stuff, a couple links uh, for some items down below that I've gotten before and that I think are useful and just very nice quality. So again, shout out to you Green, not necessary, but they're always just great to work with and they're a great company, I think. Okay, so to start things off, as always, we'll go into Yuzu and we'll just get the settings straight off the bat. So if you just want the best settings possible that I've found, copy these, see you later, have a nice day. So go to system, or, uh, system it will be left at default. So memory layout, four gigabytes of DRAM, default, whatever. CPU can left, uh, be left on auto. Now graphics, you wanna set this everything. Uh, you can introduce uh, FSR and upscaling and things like that, anti-aliasing if you want. Uh, I've just been using the bilinear adaptive filtering and just been running it that way. If you Again, if you wanna use FSR or something like that, then yeah, you can change that over. Uh, but again, just honestly, bilinear uh, window adapting filtering has been looking pretty good for me. Now, advanced graphics will go to normal for accuracy level, so that will change from high to normal. And then we're going to enable reactive flushing, uh, use async shader building, use fast GPU time hack. This is going to be a must because this is what I found will increase performance greatly on both systems, uh, meaning SteamOS and Windows. Uh, and as well, if in the future there are any uh, FPS mods that get put out for this game, I would advise to disable fast GPU time hack and try running it with that. For a while, Tears of the Kingdom and other games are similar. If you add an FPS mod, disabling fast GPU time 
uh, was required from these mods. So if in the future, again, just read the patch notes, the mod notes, if there is a mod ever in the future for this game, but I don't think we'll really need one because it's an easy game to run. Uh, anyway, so we'll use Viking Pipeline uh, Shader Cache and then Barrier Feedback Loops will turn that on. Sync Frame Rate of Video Feedback Playback, we'll just leave that off. Now that's all you need to change for that. Uh, ASTC is uncompressed, best quality. That should be set to that, but if not, leave it on uncompressed. And then we can just hit OK on that. Now, if you want to set up uh, additional controllers, uh, you can go down to configure, sorry, emulation, configure, controls, and then you can set up player one, player two, or whatever here. So you'll see here that I have just the uh, Xbox One controller plugged in. Uh, I have the GPD uh, Xbox controller disabled. So I would set that to that. But if I wanted a player two or whatever, if I had another, if you're playing keyboard and mouse, or if you had another Xbox controller, then that's how you would set them up here. And it will just auto map all the buttons to wherever you need them to do. Uh, keep in mind that the B and A will be reversed. So if you want to do that, you can change that from there. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that's, it's dead simple to set them up. Um, anyway, so uh, that's all you need to do for that as well. Uh, if you go to file and open Yuzu folder, if you're not familiar on where to put the firmware or the keys or anything like that, so we go to Yuzu folder, uh, oops, sorry, Yuzu folder, we go to NAND, uh, system, contents, registered, and then this is where you place your firmware files. Go back to Yuzu and then keys, that's where you uh, place your pro prod keys and your title keys. And then you're off to the races from there, honestly. Uh, it's as simple as that. Both on SteamOS and Windows, you're gonna be placing the files in the same spot. Obviously, you'll be downloading the Linux version versus the Windows version of Yuzu. And yeah, it's as simple as that. Then you can just double click launch to play and then you're into the game. Okay, we're back on the uh, GPD WinMax 2 here, and we're in a completely new uh, kind of world environment. I haven't played this level before, so it's going to be a fresh shader cache run. So as you can see, honestly, with any Windows handheld running Yuzu, the shader compilations, they come and they come pretty hard. Um, so you can see that there will be the moments when like kind of brand new things are happening that will get the dips down to like 40, uh, potentially even 30 at times. Now I have noticed with this game that if you're running uh, below 40, like 35 to 40 FPS, it does seem to enter like a slow motion mode. Uh, so if there is a mod in the works or going like you can see there it just dropped down to 40 and it kind of stuttered and slowed down a little bit um so if there was going to be a mod in the works it would be something similar to the tears of the kingdom one where it prevents the slowdown when it drops below like 15 or 20 fps or whatever that that cap was so if there was something similar like that for this game then you could maybe play it on like a 30 fps or 40 fps cap or something like that on a lower powered device but honestly, you're going to be wanting to play this on uh, 60 FPS. I'm I'm going to guess because it is a Mario 3D or not 3D 2D platformer game. Uh, so the dips of the shader cache, honestly, for me for performance and gameplay, it's not. It hasn't. I'm not going to say it's not, but it hasn't affected my gameplay really at all. Um, there has been a couple of moments of just like oh, okay there's like a really hard dip on a shader cache during gameplay but it didn't cause me to get killed or anything like that um i'm sure there probably will be moments when people are playing where you're going to miss that precise jump because of a shader cache stutter or something like that uh but what i will say with like any switch emulation on windows or steam deck or anything like that uh, the more you play, the more shaders are going to be compiled, and the more shaders are compiled, the less shader compilation that will be happening, and those moments of stutters will not be happening as frequently. The first time you kind of play the first level, you're going to be getting dips and stutters and things like that happening kind of quite often. Uh, but then the more you play, like I haven't even played this uh, on this game save uh, up in, or on this device past where i am right now so there's not that many shaders cached and it's honestly still pretty darn good solid performance i would say it's not perfect it's not like the nintendo switch it's not a 60 lock on the switch or like it is on the switch but honestly if you're looking to play with a bit of upscaling if you want to play on a better device or something like that uh then yeah this is honestly playing it on windows or on steam os as you'll see 
uh, I'll be playing that in the background, but playing it on SteamOS is even smoother, I would say. I'm, it's more consistently at 60, and uh, with SteamOS, I've always found that, the sh again, the shader compilation stutters, they just don't uh, cause that much or as many hard kind of drops and dips as it would on Windows, just because it's Linux and it's a much better system for emulating uh, systems. So anyway, if if you have the Steam Deck, I would say just play it on the Steam Deck. Uh, honestly, that's probably where I've played it and it's been the smoothest. Um, I would say the GPD WinMax 2 running the custom drivers the GPD put out is the second smoothest. And then the RG Ally would be the third. Uh, the RG Ally does t seem to get a little bit more dips here and there uh, compared to the GPD WinMax 2. Uh, however, compared to the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck kind of puts them both to shame because that's it's honestly a fairly consistent 60 FPS experience and there's very, very minimal dips and little drops and stutters, save for the moments where there's like new big explosions or new things happening, whatever. But anyway, so uh, talking a little bit about SteamOS, so I did run it at SteamOS 3.5.1 and that was just because I liked doing SteamOS 3.5 and then with 3.5.1 being out now, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just update to the latest kind of release candidate. So if you don't know how to do that, you'll have to go into enable developer options and then enable advanced uh, download options or channel options, I believe it's called. Uh, and then you'll change the Steam Deck uh, update from stable down to release candidate, and that'll put you out at, uh, or beta release candidate, I believe it's called, and that'll get you 3.5.1. So anyway, so when I was playing it on SteamOS 3.5.1, that's all the footage that you're seeing here. It was pretty darn smooth. Um, honestly, it didn't, uh, playing it on the SteamOS, like it didn't really, I don't know, it, there wasn't, again, there were just wasn't hard dips and stutters, like even like a fresh gameplay, like it, it didn't take that long before it became quite stable. I did downgrade it back down to SteamOS 3.4 or whatever to the stable release channel. And I did notice that the uh, settings the, or the frame rate, it, it was a little bit more inconsistent. Um, but anyway, so the one major thing that you're gonna wanna do for the Steam Deck is definitely disable SMT. Uh, I don't remember if I did actually record any footage with it of SMT off or on, um, but honestly, SMT off is the way to go. That's how you're going to get that consistent 60 FPS experience. So to do that, you'll have to download Decky Loader. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below. It's very self-explanatory. Just download that file, put it on your desktop, hit install, and you're good to go. And then it'll bring in a new menu in the quick access menu on the right uh, three dot Steam Deck button, button setting quick access menu is what it's called. Uh, there be the new decky loader storefront you'll go down there and then go to plugins and then find uh power tools and that's where you'll get the smt as well as being able to control the tdp and your gpu and cpu clocks uh, so once you have that installed and downloaded you can set up a profile in power tools to specifically for yuzu when you launch it that it will turn off smt or you can just disable it manually every time whichever or if you want to confirm that it has been disabled you uh enable the uh, performance overlay to the fullest settings where you can see each individual core and then you could she should see that there will only be four cores active instead of the uh, eight cores active uh, so again uh, you will have to disable smt to get the best performance on steam deck but that's where you're going to get the best emulation performance i would say uh, very close second to the gpd one max 2 but steam os is just that that much better that little much better uh, but anyway, so I just wanted to keep this a quick little video. I'll show the gameplay footage of all the different devices, kind of playing the first three levels. Again, I didn't want to play uh, the footage of the later kind of stuff or like middle, whatever, like second, third, fourth world stuff. But performance is fairly consistent from what I've seen uh, and from what I've played. I'm not going to say it's never going to drop below 60 because it does. Uh, it's never not going to be an av always an average of 60. Uh, and I can't say for the very late stage games or the, bo or the worlds and the bonus world at the end, I can't say performance will be solid on those. And who knows with whatever wonder effects I've been playing. I found the third level to be kind of like a good stress test because you got the uh, stars and you were jumping through and like breaking the blocks and everything. So that was a good kind of like stress test for the engine, I think. Uh, and it did perform fairly well on the Steam Deck, the RG Ally, and the GPD 
Win Max 2. It's unfortunate the uh, NER Air 1S just isn't performing as well with the, st the uh, official 7840U drivers because that was going to be my device to play this on because I just really wanted to play it on that OLED screen. So it's basically like having a Switch Mini OLED. But oh well, I'll, I'll play it on the Steam Deck and I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it there. But anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, so if you guys have any questions at all, I know I kind of went through it kind of quickly. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show you where to get any of this stuff. Buy the game, dump the files yourself, buy the game, download it somewhere else, whatever. Just please buy the game. Don't just download it and not buy it. Uh, even if you're never going to play it on the Switch like me, I at least bought it digitally on my account. So I can just say, hey, you know what? My conscience is clean as far as I'm concerned. Uh, anyway so if you're having any troubles feel free to reach out uh if you have any concerns questions or whatever feel free to reach out uh as always i'd like to give a huge shout out to my channel members that's p3cmkr roy wayne uh root access dark star rico 127 uh, sorry and joey vr as always you guys are amazing uh it's been three months for a lot of you now and one month for root access it's a half a month for p3c uh mkr uh so a huge shout out to you guys i know it's not gonna be lasting forever i don't ever expect you guys to give me money like notwithstanding um so whatever like i appreciate that is that you even made it one month that he even decided to click subscribe or join as a channel member and i don't ever really ever advertising it just at the end of the video saying thank you uh, and as always uh, just a huge shout out to my, everyone that watches as well uh, whether you choose to share dislike comment not comment whatever it doesn't really matter to me what you do with the video but as long as somebody got something out of it I'm more than happy. As always, I hope everyone has a great day.